Hey, this is Paolo from the NBA Academy and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how to make basses like the ones in the track Nameless by Secula. So it's the original track and this is my recreation. Now, I know it's not exactly the same but I think it's close enough to the point where I can teach you some really cool sound design principles. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And if you want to support the channel, consider grabbing one of our products at dmbacademy.com. We have crazy preset packs. We have producer bundles made by pro artists like Icicle, Current Value, Avis, Mastic, and many more. Showing you how to make tracks from start to finish with all project files, presets, samples, etc. included. And speaking about samples and presets, if you want the ones from this video, consider joining Preset Pass. The link is also in the description. So, with all that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so this sound is actually three layers. Here we have this one, which will be the regular 808 noisy bass. Then we have two layers that create tonality or texture on this bass. That one and this one. Now, before we get started, this is going to be a long video and it's going to be very based on post-processing as you can probably see right here. So sit back, relax, put on your sound design hat and let's get started. So if we remove all the post-processing, this is the first instrument. Just a sub with a bunch of noise. So if we solo this, we can see that we have two operators. One is just a sub. and it has a pitch envelope going down. Doom, doom. So we go down from one octave above to down and 631 milliseconds. Then we modulate this oscillator to add some harmonics with another oscillator. And then we add an EQ to boost those frequencies. Now don't worry about the clipping because this is actually a big part of the sound and that is running all of the effects very hard. So next we have the noise and the noise is just noise. And what this noise have is actually uh, an envelope making it plug here. So if you sustain it, it's just like this. But if you add a bit of attack and then remove lots of the sustain and the release and the decay, you get this type of noise hit. So once you have that, you mix that with the sub and then you can jump into the post processing, which is based a lot around EQing and saturation. So the first EQ is going to be a big notch, removing the second harmonic of this bass, leaving only the fundamental and then cutting a lot of this noise before 10k. So it's not super harsh the moment we saturate this. The next thing is a phaser. And what this phaser does is it creates a formant by adding boosts and cuts on certain parts of the frequency spectrum simulating a formant filter. And you can change this with this frequency knob. And it has this type of AOU movement. So once you have those things, you can start saturating the sound. Pretty cool. And then you can change the formant with this phaser. And that is it for the sound. That is actually it. It's just sub, noise, and the proper EQ before a lot of saturation. But to get it perfect, you have to process it a lot by adding more EQing, compression, noise, etc. So the next thing is going to be a simple boost on the highs and some OTT. Then we're going to have another phaser, once again creating that resonance spots. Then another phaser, once again doing the same thing, and one more. And again, you can move these depending on the texture that you want your noise to have. Once you're done with that, you can EQ it however you want before running it into more saturation. So for example, if you want more of this type of harmonics, you can boost that and remove some sub. As you can see, so the principle once again behind this sound is proper EQing before saturation. And the phaser is kind of an EQ that is boosting and cutting on specific parts of the spectrum. Cool. So once you have that, the next thing that I added is this little parallel rack that I use all the time that separates the sound into a dry version of itself. 
and then a stereo version of itself that has this chorus it has a frequency shifter it has some chorus and then it has this plugin to make it super wide and then I remove all the mids from it so let's just break down this chain real quick this is the original sound then this is what it sounds like being run through this preset Joman of chorus then it's getting slightly frequency shifted above by 8 hertz then it's processed by a chorus then we have this wider plugin making it super wide and there's like millions of facing issues right now in the sound but that's okay because we're gonna cut everything with this mid side EQ like this and we just have a bunch of really cool noise that is a stereo on top of our original signal now and then we have this high layer which is basically just a signal like this being run through a vocoder that is set on noise and it has this type of shape and then we cut everything now we can mix together all of these layers cool then once again we have more EQing just to keep building the texture and really shaping the noise now don't be afraid of doing very harsh cuts doing very high boosts because in sound sign everything goes you can worry about the mixing later when, for example, you start resampling the sound and using it in the arrangement, then you can start thinking about the proper EQ curve that you want for your bass group. So, these are all the EQs that I used. And this will be the first bass. Now, this same sound is being duplicated. And as you can see right here, it shares a lot of similarities but it has a bunch of different variations in the phasers in these phasers right here and through all the EQs like this here's another phaser there's more phasers in the middle that I tried and then at the end it sounds like this now in the end what I did was making it wider and applying the same thought process as the other sound by selecting which part of the mids do I want to be covered by the sound and which part of the sides do I want to be covered by the sound. Cool. Then EQ it and mix it with the other sound. And we can always go back to any point of the chain and change a phaser, for example this one. As you can see, this sound can be super complex, like you can spend a lot of time with the sound, but in reality the principle is proper EQing, proper shaping of the sound before distorting it. So you just start with a sub and some noise. Cool. So again, for the next layer is the same thought process, same sound, but different variations of the EQing and phasers. Then at the end, I just selected the frequency range that I wanted for the sound. This one. This one's very noisy and I just wanted it to occupy this spot right here. It really makes a lot of difference. Then I just layer this with the other instruments and that is our bass. And you can remove or add as many layers as you want and really 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 perfect your instrument that is sub and noise. So this is how you make this type of sounds. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And if you want to get access to the preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.